<laughs> so, Drew, are you excited for the Oscars? You don't care because you haven't seen any of the movies. Yeah, I really, I mean, I have seen a few of them. I think I saw number 10 on the 10 best list, which is District 9, which I thought was, uh, you know, kind of crappy. Well, when you look at the list of Best Picture nominees, it's like a Sesame Street bit. Which one of these doesn't belong? It's like District 9. How did that get on the list? Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, let, let's be honest. Every single movie studio, if you said to them, would you rather have a super-duper critically acclaimed movie that you made no money on or something that the critics hated but made, you know, $2.5 billion, they would all take the $2.5 billion movie in a second. Of course. So why is it that... You know, the best movies, shouldn't they automatically be the ones that made the most money? Well, let's be serious here. It's a business. Um, no, the Oscars are the thing that tries to counterbalance the greed. That, hey, look, people made some great art, and this was the best art. Didn't make the most money. Yeah, that, but, the, but if they want people to actually watch the Oscars, the people need to care about what they're talking about. Well, you know, the problem is is that if you do it like that, then every movie is the equivalent of American Idol. It just becomes cotton candy consumption film, and it's not, there's no art. Because you know what? Movies that are really great sometimes don't catch on until much later. Yeah, but you can have a, a great movie that makes a lot of money. I mean, look at uh, you know, Dark Knight was a good movie. Now, there are people who tell you that's not a great movie. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's the same way that people tell you The English Patient blew also, but it doesn't well, it did. win the Oscars. It did. Now, we were talking about companies having trouble making money like Hulu. Three days before the uh, Oscar broadcast, the spots are sold out and at decent rates. So, Chris, what do you think? Do you think that, that the viewership's going to go up because they actually have gotten really good ad rates this year? Well, you know, I mean, last year they made a big deal about Hugh Jackman and, like, oh, this is going to be the year it's going to go up. And it, it only went up, like, 10%. I mean, and... It's still decently rated, and I think maybe this year it'll go up a little bit. They they expanded to the ten nominees, and I was I actually think that was a good move because you know last year the Dark Knight didn't get nominated, and really I mean you know I would say a large majority of people I'm sure there are some detractors, but that was like consensus one of the five best movies of last year. I mean you know if you look at Rotten Tomatoes, which is you know an aggregator. It was. It had like a 98% fresh rating. Like even the crit, everyone. It had a huge box office. The critics liked it, and then I think it nominated for Best Picture was kind of stupid because you know why? I mean, so you can nominate the reader. It, <laughs> it was a ridiculous. Now this year they expanded it, and I'll, I'll 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 politely disagree with you. I thought District Nine was great, and I thought that was a good example of a movie that was you know a big huge box office hit that actually was good, like in the vein of The Dark Knight. And, I mean, they ended up getting this year, like, movies like that. And then, like, a little nothing movie, like A Serious Man, which I thought was terrible and made, like, $10 million. And, you know, you have Avatar in there. You have The Hurt Locker. It's a good balance. So I think people might watch this year. You know, last time, you know, when Titanic was up for James, with James Cameron, you know, 98, 99, it was a huge, that was a huge rating. They got, like, you know, almost, however many, you know, 50 million people or whatever it was. It was just a huge number. It's not going to get that this time because I feel like even though Avatar has made all this money, I still don't feel like it's as beloved as Titanic was because no. it just seems like more people are seeing Avatar because they have to see it instead of, I love this movie, I'm going to see it 50 times like people did with Titanic. So I think the ratings go up a little bit. I don't think it's still a niche broadcast, though. I mean, you're not going to get huge numbers. It's not like the Super Bowl. Right. Well, the, the interesting thing is... Um Hyundai has seven commercials airing during the the, uh, the Oscars for Genesis and Sonata cars. Okay. And guess who can't do the voiceover on those commercials? Oh. Jeff, Jeff Bridges. Oh, of course. He's the voiceover because the Academy prohibits anyone nominated for an Oscar for participating in commercials that run during the show. Well, that's funny. Maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll, he'll get a plug-in when he wins. You could be. Kim Basinger, Richard Dreyfuss, David Duchovny, Catherine Keener, Mandy Patinkin, and Martin Sheen. And I kept going, well, why did they pick these people? <laughs> like, who are these people that are going to take Jeff Bridges' place? Yeah, I guess, they, you know, they, 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 I'm always fascinated by that voiceover thing because it's always fun trying to pick out whose voice is what. I, I did know Bridges did a Hyundai now that you said it, though. You're right. Yeah. And uh, in an interesting twist, um, Richard Thomas is going to be out of some money after four long years. He's the voice of Mercedes. 
Yes, and now uh, I see, I, I know who you're going to say is replacing him. Who is it? John Hamm. Yep, Don Draper from Mad Men. Yeah, that's good. He's got a great voice. Big he, fan. He does, but I, I kind of feel bad because, you know, like, you know, he's working, and Richard Thomas, what has he got? He's got no. plays and he's got Mercedes. <laughs> Hopefully he banked a lot of that money, right? You better hope he did. <laughs>